Okay, let's talk about the 2D gas laws. Uh, we have uh, a number of them to talk about, but the premise is going to be very similar to each other, as you'll find out in a second. Okay, let's start with Boyle's law. If um, you collect data for a gas in which you have a corresponding pressure and a corresponding volume, and you simply plot pressure versus volume, what you're going to find out is that you get a relationship that is definitely not linear. You're going to have some type of curve. This could be exponential, polynomial, logarithmic, but it's definitely not linear. However, tweaking this relationship by doing one simple thing, specifically looking at the inverse of the volume, so 1 over the volume, employing pressure versus inverse volume, that data set now becomes linear. And because anytime that you end up with a line, you always end up with equation y equals mx plus b, in this case, y being pressure and x being 1 over volume, you can rewrite this equation. And we're going to make one assumption as well. We're going to make the assumption that the y-intercept is zero, which if your data is you know, very, very accurate, uh, that will be the case. The intercept will end up being very close to zero. But we're going to assume it's zero for simplicity's sake. So we have y being pressure, 1 over volume being x, and then we have this little c, which represents the slope of the line. All right, now, this is the trick I'm going to play. I'm going to isolate for the slope of the line, meaning that I'm going to multiply both sides by the volume. So now we have pressure times volume equals the slope. And since this relationship is a linear relationship, the slope is guaranteed to be constant no matter what the pressure volume data set is. As long as they correspond to each other, the slope is going to be the same. So that means that if we pick a data point, a pressure volume data point anywhere on the line, doesn't really matter where, but you pick one data point, now you have a specific pressure P1 and specific volume V1, that multiplication still will equal the same slope. Now the beauty of this is that you are not constrained to sticking to just that data point. You could very well be using a different data point, P2 and V2. And so if you multiply P2 times V2, once again, you're guaranteed to get the same value of the slope. And so what this is basically telling you is that P1 times V1 must equal P2 times V2. This right here is what we denominate as Boyle's Law. It tells you the idea that as the pressure increases, the volume has to decrease and vice versa. If the volume increases, the pressure decreases. But another idea right here is that you have two sets of pressure and two sets of volume. Uh, one extra thing I'll say is that this has to be done at constant temperature and technically speaking at constant number of moles of gas. All right, let me show you an example. If the pressure of a gas is 720 millimeters mercury at a volume of one kiloliter, what will be the pressure at the new volume right here? Okay, so we have two sets of pressure being mentioned, the one that we have been given and the one that we're looking for. We have been given two sets of volume. So what this is telling us is that we have pressure and volume in two sets. So that spells out Boyle's law. So you start with that, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. And since you're looking for the pressure, all you need to do is solve for P2, which means that you will divide both sides by V2. So now you have P1, V1 over V2 equals P2. All right, perfect. So what happens now is that you have to input the data. You have 720 millimeters mercury for the pressure. So you input that for P1. V1 has to be the corresponding volume, which in this case is one kiloliter. The second volume is, however, in milliliters. So what you need to do is change either kiloliters to mLs or change mLs to kiloliters, or conversely, you could change kiloliters and mLs directly to liters. The idea right here is that the volumes have to have the same units, otherwise they will not cancel out. So the kiloliter is the same thing as a thousand liters. The one ml is the same thing as 10 to the negative three liters. And in this format, the units do cancel out. This has to happen. So it's not sufficient that you guys just write the numbers. You need to write the units as well to ensure 
that they are okay to be cancelled. All right, so 720 times 1,000 divided by 10 to the negative 3 means that you will end up with a ridiculously high pressure of 7.2 times 10 to the 8th millimeters of mercury. Now, that pressure is probably way too high to be uh, held in most any container, so this is totally hypothetical. You probably might not be able to do such a change in volume. That's a bit too drastic. All right, but that's Boyle's law. Now, on to the next one, Charles' law. The premise is very similar, except that now we look at volume versus temperature. And it turns out to be the case that if you plot data of volume and temperature, you end up getting a linear relationship right away. And so what that means is that the y is volume and the x is temperature. The slope is still c, and we still assume that the intercept is zero. If we solve for the slope once more, we're going to find out that v over t equals c. Choose any data point on the line, v1 and t1, that ratio has to still equal the slope. And if you choose a different data set, V2 and T2, as long as you divide V by T, you are end up with the same slope. So this means that V1 over T1 has to equal V2 over T2. This right here is known as Charles' law. And it applies if and only if the pressure is constant and the number of moles of gas having changed. So here's an example. We have 50 ml of nitrogen gas. So we're talking about volume once. We have a temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, talking about temperature once. And we have a pressure of 736 millimeters mercury. So, okay, pressure is being mentioned. So we have volume, temperature, and pressure mentioned once. Then it says, what is the volume if the temperature increases by 35? So now we have volume and temperature mentioned once more, but nothing is mentioned about the pressure. And that means that you can assume the pressure to remain constant. Okay. I need to specifically tell you that the pressure changed to something else for you to assume that there's going to be a second pressure. Otherwise, this can be assumed to be constant. All right, so what this means is that we have two sets of volume and two sets of temperature. This is spelling out Charles' law directly from what's being given on the problem. You have two Vs and two Ts. All right, so V1 over T1 must equal V2 over T2. We are looking for the second volume. So we need to solve for V2, which means that you cross multiply both sides by T2. All right, now, aside from getting to this point, perhaps the most important part of this problem is to make the following change. The temperatures. The temperatures cannot be input as degrees Celsius. They actually have to be in Kelvin. And the reason why is because degrees Celsius does have negative values for temperature. If you get cold enough, you could end up with negative degrees Celsius. But if you plug in negative temperature for, let's say, T2, and it so happens that T1 is positive, you will end up with a negative volume. And negative volumes don't have any meaning whatsoever in our physical world. So this means that we need to change to Kelvin because in Kelvin, the temperature will never be negative. It will always be in a positive regime. So that's the first thing. Second thing, notice the semantics of the problem. I'm saying that the temperature is increasing by 35. I'm not saying that it's changing to 35 degrees Celsius. So this means that the final temperature has to be 25 plus 35 and then change that to Kelvin. So check this out. V1 is the 50 ml. Okay. Uh, T1 is 25 and here is T1 on the denominator, 25 plus 273, and T2 is all of that plus 35 additional degrees Celsius. So 25 plus 35, that gives you the temperature in degrees Celsius, plus the 273 gives you the temperature in Kelvin. And now the temperatures will end up being 333 on top, 298 Kelvin on the bottom. The Kelvins will cancel out. And upon carrying out the calculation, you'll find out that the volume is now 55.9 ml. And notice this. Because volume and temperature both increase linearly or decrease linearly, if you increase the temperature, and that's what's happening here, you're going from 25 degrees Celsius to 35, you are expected the volume increases as well. And if you look carefully, notice that we start at 50 ml and we have ended up at 55.9 ml. The volume has indeed gone up 
and so has the temperature. This is a check for you to make sure that your calculation has been done correctly. Okay, in the next video, we'll talk about Gay-Lussac's and Avogadro's law.